everyone. My name is Sana Harris, and I'm the Employment Specialist here at the Economic Opportunity Board. We are coming to you live with another Workforce Wednesdays webinar. And we also have with us today, Mr. Scott Bushman, who is our resume specialist here at the Economic Opportunity Board. He is here and ready to review your resume to help you create a resume for the very first time. If that is your need, he is here to do a mock interview with you and give you any tips that may be useful for you um, in writing your resume, presenting your resume, and in conducting an, um, or attending an interview. And today we are going to be presenting to you Ms. LaShondra Lewis who is here with us from Nevada forklift and training. So we know that during COVID, um, the industry of warehouse and truck driving, um, just ordering things online, not being out in the public so much has really expanded. And so that forklift training is an in-demand um, employment area that is gonna be helpful and useful to a lot of individuals, a lot of people in the community who desire to start a new career or desire to get new certifications so that they can um, maybe move up in their current career, get a different position, have um, better opportunities for themselves. And so this is our Workforce Wednesdays webinar. We are here every first and third Wednesday of each month. We are live on Facebook. Um, this will also be posted to YouTube as well if you missed the live um, viewing. Our number at EOB to contact us if you need any of our workforce services is 702-445-7105. You can also visit our website where you will find um, other services that we offer to the community, our applications, and what is new in workforce. And that website is going to be eobcapsnv.org. Um, our workforce um, initiative provides the community with work cards, uh, work uniforms. If you have, if you're struggling with transportation to get to and from that new job that you have just um, obtained, we can help you with um, gas cards or bus cards. Um, we are also here to help you begin new careers, as I mentioned earlier. So if you're looking to become a truck driver or a cosmetologist or you're going to the medical field, you wanna be a pharmacy technician, um, reach out to us. EOB is here to service the community and to get our um, community back to work. So we are all about uh, reunification. We are all about um, helping the community to get back on its feet. So um, LaShondra, would you please introduce yourself to our viewers and give us a little bit of background about your business? Absolutely. My name, hi everybody, my name is LaShondra Lewis and I am um, the owner of Nevada Forklift Training LLC. Um, just a little bit of background about our business. We are an OSHA standardized uh, training program for becoming certified to operate powered industrial trucks um, when needed. So with for your career, um, sometimes with your employer, you may need to uh, move on to a, a, another job duty um, that may be driving lifts. So that is our goal. Our goal is to, to certify you um, to ensure individuals have the mechanical aptitude to operate a powered industrial truck. So we typically know them, everybody knows them as maybe a forklift um, mm -hmm. safely, okay? And that's per what OSHA requires. Um, we have over 20 years of experience. Um, and our mission is to help those, you know, like I said, uh, attain that drive-in ex safety experience. Um, but not only that, you know, maybe receive or move on in their career um, mm -hmm. a bit further. So that's a little bit of ba uh, background about us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. And that, it's very important that you mentioned safety yes. um, because sometimes we think, oh, I don't need a certification. I don't have time to go through the training. I can't get time off of work. Uh, it's just a hassle, you know, and I, I just don't have the time. But um, because, because sometimes we think that, you know, um, we can just learn by watching, yeah, you know, yeah. oh, it, it's simple. You know, I've, I've seen um, Sarah or William do it a million times at work on his shift or her shift, and I can do that. Um, but safety is what's very, very important. So I'm glad that you mentioned that safety. And that's why certifications 
are very important as well. Um, and you also mentioned the OSHA certification because um, that is what's required for construction um, sites. That is what is required for uh, warehouses. That is what is required for if you're working at um, Amazon um, or a lot of the city and state um, positions that are have to do with construction and building and warehouse, you have to be certified because that safety is so important. It's a liability, not only for the company, but for yourself and for your other employees as well. Um, and it's just best to operate within that within that realm of safety um, and those guidelines. Agreed. <laughs> so Lashandra, Le 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 I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about, you said you have over 20 years experience. So that yes. means that you were operating during COVID. What was that like for you? Did, did your industry take a dive? Did it improve? So uh, our, our head trainer, unfortunately, had, he had another scheduled appointment that crossed over and I would have him here. But um, our head trainer who um, in, in our general manager who does everything when it comes to safety, mm -hmm. um, he, his career is really in the, con in the convention industry. Okay. And in that industry, he's been in that industry over 15 years, um, mm -hmm. has been driving 25 years, um, but has been in that industry over 15 years. And in that industry, um, it took a complete dive, like complete dump, wow. um, no work for, because of course conventions, you know, we have millions of people every year that come here. Um, right. And part of what they have to do is, is get that stuff in and out of the convention centers um, and they use all types of lifts, you know, when they're doing it. So not only has he, he does, done that on a regular basis, but um, he has trained that, you know, uh, with individuals there in his industry um, and those who are, you know, coming up under him, journeymen that are coming up under him um, mm -hmm. to make sure that they are meeting those safety uh, regulations when they are driving um, all through those convention halls. So, so absolutely, it did take, to answer your question, Sana, yes, it, it was an extreme, <laughs> an extreme um, impact on uh, his working ability. So yes, for sure. And um, because of that, you know, we thought about, well, what do we, what do we keep seeing, right? We keep seeing people ordering Amazon, you know, right. ordering groceries, they're ordering everything to go. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. And we kept seeing, you know, in Vegas, construction continuing to, to flourish, you know. Right. So what right. we thought about was there's a real need for people to tr to actually drive these things um, and these 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 trucks around uh, any type of work site, warehouse work sites. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we all heard during COVID was how, you know, our economy is going to tank, you know, and we were thinking like, hey, you know, this could definitely be something that we can do to help um, individuals, but also Las Vegas, you know, what can we do to continue to keep people working, you know, and then not only that, but for our mental health as well, you know, it's just not for the monetary reasons, but for our mental health, I know plenty of people that um, went star crazy being at home, you know, even though they were getting the checks from unemployment and many, for many people, those checks for unemployment weekly was much more than what they were making, you right. know, but still a lot of people wanted to go to work and not be subjected to just being at home. So we mm -hmm. thought this is a great way, you know, to, to help in those, those aspects, you know, just to get people back to work. You know, absolutely, absolutely, and that's what we are about um, is recovery. So, we definitely the Economic Opportunity Board is definitely here to aid in that recovery and oh, to get nice. back and work to help get Nevada back to work. Uh, today actually is, is the first day that we are back open 100%. And awesome. so, um, you know, just watching the news, you know, this last mm -hmm. week, last two weeks, employers are drastically desperately looking for employees they need bodies they need people to fulfill these positions and if you are not certified or if you don't have the qualities um, or uh, the qualifications I should say for these different positions then you know they still unfortunately don't have the bodies to fulfill those positions and so like 
like you mentioned, a lot of us, I was one of them, you know, I, I fortunately continued to work from home, but it's just, it's a difference, you know, when you don't have that camaraderie, when you don't, you're not there to see your um, coworkers every day, you're not there to have that socialization outside of the home, you know, and so I, it's, it's very important. Um, so recovery and getting back to work is going to be a huge part of what is going to make the community continue to grow and flourish in the right direction. Um, and so that is very important. Um, can we talk about some of the positions? Um, you know, I heard you mention convention work. What are some of the positions that um, someone who is certified in forklift training can expect to um, attain? Okay, so, you know, as I mentioned, well, convention is definitely, you know, a great one. Mm -hmm. um, I would also tell you warehouses, you know, warehouses all over the city. There are so many of them. Um, and, and, you know, typically the average, um, I'm sorry, I have to look down here because I got to want to get this straight. So <laughs> typically <laughs> the average forklift um, driver or operator in Las Vegas makes about $20 an hour. So, yeah. you know, I mean, it could start at about 15, but <laughs> that's not bad, especially, you know, folks that are, because we've seen a lot of young people come through, you right. know, and to kind of start off in that aspect mm -hmm. of, you know, that kind of money, especially now when we see the rent prices going up and things like that, you know, is not bad. Um, and they go up to about maybe $22, $23 an hour. Mm -hmm. So just from that, and to answer your question, Sana, um, warehouses, um, you, you, you see in the grocery stores, there are so many lifts that we pass regularly and daily that you probably don't even pay attention to. You'll see them right. outside, you know, construction, um, where they're, where they are, you know, using the bigger lifts, um, mm -hmm. to, to move things around. And of course, if you're part of a union, you know, you're making more than the 22, $23 an hour. So it really, um, it really varies, but it's all in the industrial field that mm -hmm. you will see, you know, I, it's so funny that since I started this business, um, with, with my husband and, you know, we, we would go places and I would never notice the mm -hmm. different types of lifts, you know, but now when I go into businesses and I'll see, oh, that's a, you know, this lift or that's, you know, the regular. So I'm like, oh, they went and got a forklift, you know, to, to, to move everything. So now it's kind of funny, you know, that I notice it, but there are a few different areas where you can, you know, go in and um, you would never think they would need a lift for uh, doing those types of services. So primarily, yes, industrial conduct construction, uh, convention, uh, those are three main categories that you will see. Warehousing, you know, that kind of thing. It's kind of like uh, when you buy a new car, you don't notice the car until you get one and then you right. start everywhere. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> has them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, it's funny how the mind works, how the brain works. Um, and, and I just wanted to follow up, you know, um, I was thinking about forklifts as well. Um, I was at Home Depot you know, yeah. and um, they use a forklift there. Um, yeah. Even at the nurseries, you know, I went to get some um, some soil for my lawn and, and they mm -hmm. use forklifts there. So the possibilities are there, you know, definitely. And as you mentioned, um, you know, if you get into the union, you know, you can start out at an even higher rate. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's just a starting place, somewhere to That's start, right. you know, That's and right. there are plenty of other certifications that you can graduate to that you can attain. But as you mentioned, for a start, 15 to $20 is pretty great, especially considering our economy took a deep dive. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, you know, we're on the verge of making a comeback and I don't doubt that we will make a great comeback. Right. Um, but we've just got to start somewhere. So if you are tuning in to this live, uh, my name is Sana Harris, and I'm the employment specialist here at the Economic Opportunity Board. We are talking with Ms. LaShondra Lewis from Nevada Forklift uh, Training, and we are here with you every first and third Wednesday of the month. Our website is eobcapsnv.org. Please tune in, join our, our webinar, come to our website. There are, there's tons and tons of information, not only just about workforce, but also about family supportive services as well. So we have utility and rental assistance. We do education and training. We can help you with everything that is um, circled around workforce. So if you need a health card, a sheriff's card, a TAM card, if you need a work uniform, 
or tools for your new employment. If you are desiring to go back to school to get a start a new career in the medical field or construction or truck driving, the Economic Opportunity Board is here to help you in attaining those needs and attaining those goals. Um, so please join our, join our webinar on the first and third Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m. Log on to our uh, website, eobcapsnv.org. For those that may not be so computer savvy or computer literate, give us a call, 702-445-7105. We are here Monday through Friday, and there's always someone available to take your questions, so give us a call. We also have with us today, Scott Bushman, who is our resume specialist. He does mock interviews and he is here to let you know what is new and upcoming in the workforce world. So Scott, would you please introduce yourself? Hey, as you pointed out, I'm Scott Bushman and I've been, well, I'm probably an expert in resumes for the simple reason that I have applied to over 100 jobs in the Las Vegas area within the last 25 years. And so I've had some experience with them. I know what works and what doesn't work because I had a whole bunch that didn't work. <laughs> and so uh, we kind of learned over time what works best in resumes. Again, remember your objective of the resume is to get an interview. Um, and if you get a chance to be in front of somebody, then you just impress them with your capabilities and your, your knowledge, uh, what you know how to do. Uh, the nice thing about it is if you go over and work with LaShondra Le and, and get some training, we, we can add that to your resume. Uh, mm -hmm. We do them as Word documents because almost all of the upload tools that they have for resumes right now are designed for Word documents. And so if you just create it as a Word document, the nice thing about it is as your abilities change, as you learn how to do new skills, you just add it to your resume. Uh, key thing to remember is that as you get a little bit older and uh, or seasoned, I guess we got to call it seasoned, <laughs> so we can be politically correct. But as you as you gain additional experience, you may not want to put all of it on your resume. You may want to focus on specific skills. This skill set gets me this job, and that's the one I'm going for. And so you focus on those skills. They don't care if you know how to do ballroom dancing unless you're teaching a ballroom dancing class. So, you know, it, it, it just makes a difference to focus on the things that are most important. I used to tell people, go ahead and take a look at the job posting. Mm -hmm. What does it say there? You might want to use some of the same verbiage. You don't want to quote it word for word, but you may want to use some of the key words because right now they're having an automated system that looks at every one of these resumes, they may get a, a thousand resumes mm. for every single job that comes in. And there's no way a human being can go through a thousand resumes. I'm a fast reader. There's, it would take me weeks right. to get through that many resumes. And so they have an automated system that goes through and looks at them. It's look, looking for keywords. So if it says you gotta have forklift training, then somewhere on there in your resume, it ought to say you're forklift trained. Mm -hmm. you know? And so those are the kinds of things you want to do is make sure that it matches your resume, matches to what they're asking for. Um, and then once that's been through and looked at by an automated system, then maybe the last 200 resumes that pass all of those other things mm -hmm. get made by a human being. And they have maybe six or seven seconds to be impressed by your resume. So the important stuff needs to be in that top third of your resume, mm -hmm. just in that first maybe six or eight lines. Those key things should be what they're looking for. So that's where you want to put it. Place it right there at the top. Then if they get excited, then they'll go on and they'll read through the rest of your resume. Mm -hmm. You see the books that are behind me here? Almost every book has a fly leaf. And in the fly leaf, there's a little blurb that talks about what's inside of the book. Well, this is that top third of your resume. It's the introduction. If you pick up a newspaper, 
or a magazine. You don't read every single article that's in there unless you're nuts. What you read is the ones you're interested in and you get interested by what's in the first paragraph. And that's the same kind of thing you got to do on your resume. Right. Get people excited, get it so that they, they look at it and they go, ooh, I got to find out some more about this person. <laughs> and then they'll read to, we used to always tell everybody, don't make it longer than a page. And, and my answer now that I've done more of this and worked more with people mm -hmm. is if you've got enough interesting stuff to tell about that it pertains to this job, go over my four or five paragraphs. It's not that big of a deal, but don't make it longer than two pages. The exception to that is if you're going to be the dean of a college or the head of a medical field at, at a, a hospital or something, those guys have like 20 to 50 page resumes. They call it a curriculum by A or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot longer, but for most of us, for most of the positions you're going for, unless you're applying for a position that's going to be making over $100,000 a year, most of the time, you're going to want to keep it pretty close to that one page so they'll read it. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple things that have changed over time. For instance, you don't want to put on the bottom of your resume uh, references available upon request. Mm -hmm. They haven't put that in there since uh, 1995, I think, or so. So don't put that on there because it basically says this resume is outdated. This person has not worked for a long time, which right now we're running into. There's a whole lot of people that are unemployed right now for the first time in mm -hmm. 20 years. And some of them have never filled out a resume because they started back in the good old boy days where it was a friend of a friend of a friend that recommended them and they have never even done a resume. Right. So now they're having to go through and do a resume for the first time in their lives. And it's a scary thing. Right. I understand. I'll help you to get through it. That's my objective is to make it so it, it's easier. It's not easy. There's no such thing. But so that it's easier for you so that you can feel comfortable getting, telling them about yourself in a way that will get you the opportunity to talk to somebody. Right. So it's Scott, it sounds like if you have not um, put your resume out there, if you have not had to put your resume out there within the last five years, it's pretty safe to say there are things that you're not aware of. There are things that you don't know because changes, you know, we're ever evolving people and, and so is this world. And so things have changed. If you have been in your career, like you mentioned, 10, 20, 30 years, and you haven't had to write a resume or submit a resume or a cover letter or a cover page or any of those things, then you, there are gonna be things that you don't know. So no matter what age you are, no matter what level of education you have, it is a great idea to just run this by somebody, you know, just, hey, Scott, submit your resume. Hey, Scott, can you take a look at this? Any pointers, anything that I need to change or do differently? Um, any updates I need to make? Um, because I know, Scott, that you've mentioned before that um, we need to have several resumes and not just one because oh, yeah. you're applying for a forklift driver and then you go and you apply for a flagger. Those are different requirements and those are different um, job duties. And so you can't use, there's no re one resume fits all. You have to have a varied resume for the varied positions. Is that right? Yeah. Well, for instance, on mine, I've, I've had to apply as a trainer for one company, for as a teacher for a different company, as a life coach for a different company, as a, uh, I, the names change. And right. so what you do is, is you look at it and go, okay, is that skill something I know how to do? Yes. Okay, then let's change the resume so it uses that wording instead of different wording. And then it gets the opportunity to go in and talk to somebody. Uh, so again, the key thing is don't get embedded into the fact that one resume fits all because it just can't. There are just too many different kinds of, if you look at the job postings, the job postings aren't the same. So if hmm. the job postings aren't the same, then your resume has to modify to fit. 
Right, right. So it doesn't matter if you are a student just coming out of high school or if you were a stay at home mom for the last 15 years, um, you have qualifications, you have skills. Um, when you were a student, you know, you had to be punctual, you had to be on time, you had to multitask, um, you had to do problem solving. And so all of those are skills that are required on a multitude of jobs. Even same thing with being a stay at home mom. You definitely had to multitask. You had great communication skills. You were most definitely a leader. So there are so many qualifications that you have that you just may not be aware of. And so um, don't be afraid because we are eliminating fear. We are here to help you to get back out there, to be successful, to be confident and to be well prepared for that interview, for that resume, even if it's a virtual resume, because this whole virtual thing is pretty new to a lot of us. You know, we've had to adapt over this past year. Um, and Scott, you've given out some great pointers and some great tips for um, how to properly um, take a or, or conduct a, a participate in a virtual resume. You know, sometimes it's even over the phone. And so if you're driving, you know, you don't want to be driving and, and taking a phone resume and you're hollering at the car in front of you because there's, so <laughs> you know, there's so many things that can go wrong and so many things that can happen. Even at home, you got children running around, diapers on the floor, whatever it is. And so whatever um, interview you are going to be taking, it can be fearful, you know, it can be we fear the unknown, you know, it can be intimidating even. And so Scott is here, the Economic Opportunity Board is here to give you pointers, to help you get prepared, to help you be successful and to give you that extra confidence that you may be needing. Scott, did you wanna to talk to us a little bit more about the virtual um, interviews? So what we're doing right now, in some places we tease and call this the Brady Bunch interview where it has the, the squares around that. And uh, you might run into that. That may be your next interview is that kind of interview just simply because they're afraid to have you come into their place or they can do more of them. So let's say I've got, I, I, I just can't get it down to fewer than 10 people, mm -hmm. but my boss only wants to see three. So I'm the hiring manager and I might say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do 10 of them online because we can set up and do it uh, do those you know pretty much one right after the other and and we can do a bunch of them in a day see a lot of different people and then kind of get an idea of who's best mm -hmm. and it gives us a chance to see them mm -hmm. uh, see them in in their environment rather than in our environment uh, see them where they're actually more comfortable hopefully and uh, it, it's a good way to do it. And it, but the problem for us is that if you're doing that kind of interview, you have to worry about things like, okay, my neighbor just decided he was going to jackhammer the driveway right as my interview starts. You know, it's okay to say, hey guys, I have zero control over this one. Can we reschedule it for a better time? And then you go chat with your neighbor and see if there's a better time and, and make arrangements for it. Uh, but there are some things you can have control over, like uh, five screaming children. Maybe grandma can watch them for an hour for me so that I can have a decent interview. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I can find a neighbor that you know has children and they can have a play date or something while I'm doing my interview so mm -hmm. that I don't have screaming children running through the background uh, mm -hmm. to disturb things. You also have to watch out about backgrounds. I mean, right now I've got books behind me, but I'm in my kitchen, guys. If there were, you know, if my sink were stacked full of dishes, probably would not go over quite as well. <laughs> and so you have to be aware of surroundings a lot more than you ever used to have to. And you also have to realize frequently they will do a phone interview for your first interview. Mm -hmm. and so it may be just a, a 10 questions. Uh, let's eliminate some of these people and get down to, because that's what the process for most of this is is let's eliminate everybody till the only person that's left is the best candidate. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're trying to do. And so you have to realize that some of the questions they're asking, like how many golf balls will fit into 747? Does that really, really have anything to do with my job? 
Because <laughs> I'm quite sure I'm not going to be stuffing golf balls in a 747. But what they're doing is they're saying, okay, how does this person handle surprises? Right. If you poke your eyes up into the sky for a second and go, man, I've never really thought about that. Let's say a golf ball's about this big, 747 about this big. I'm guessing it might be somewhere around 74 million, you know. At least they're seeing that you're thinking, and that's what they want to see is how does this person think? How do they react? Mm -hmm. the, the worst question they're going to always ask you tell me about yourself right they don't want to know about your ballroom dance they don't want to know about your spanish lessons they want to know what kind of worker am i going to get if i hire scott what kind what do i get how is that going to improve my company those are the kinds of things that you need to focus on I've always dreaded that question because it's so open. It's an open-ended question. <laughs> well, and, and we're always taught not to be braggarts and everything else. And, and you have to brag a little. It's a part of the game. So be aware of the fact that this is the time where you can say, well, my friends have said that I'm good at this and I'm good at that. You know, that way you're not bragging because your friends have said that, even if you put the words into their mouths for them. But <laughs> but those are those are the kinds of things that you can do that will make it so that it gets you an opportunity. Again, remember you want to have an opportunity to sit down live in front of somebody and, and actually do a, a real job interview. So uh, yeah, tell me about yourself. Right. It's always going to be in there. Uh, I've got a, a list of 21 questions that's actually on our mm -hmm. website. Uh, go look at it because a lot of those questions, you're going to be surprised to go, you know, the last interview I had, they asked me that one. Mm -hmm. and, and that will help you to feel more comfortable because this is the least comfortable. I would rather be beaten than to have to go to a job interview, literally. <laughs> It's, it's that scary to me but because i've been to so many of them i've gotten to the point where i'm a lot more comfortable sometimes than the people that are giving me the interviews because i've been to hundreds of interviews and this may be their fifth one. right and right. so it helps that i know how to make them feel comfortable and relaxed and that helps to relax me and then i just talk and and tell people what they want to know, what kinds of things they're interested in, mm -hmm. and let them know that, yeah, I can think and I can actually be an asset to this company. Right. And so we know uh, that you mentioned earlier, Scott, we know that we are up against hundreds and sometimes thousands of uh, other applicants. And so, again, it can be very intimidating. But as you mentioned, um, a lot of things are um, electronic these days. So there's not really a human being that is going through all of those resumes it's a machine it's software that is sorting those resumes and so it's important like you said that you have those keywords the employer puts out um, the the job opening and he tells you exactly what is needed and you just kind of regurgitate that to him but using your own experience so you um it's it, it's a, a good idea to have someone who like Scott has been doing this for many years to just take a look at that resume before you submit it. A lot of times we may think, oh, you know, I've got this, I got the experience, I got it on the resume, but presentation, keywords, getting your experience out there and getting your resume noticed is what is going to get you through that computerized generated system. It's what's going to get you noticed. A lot of times we um, you know, we use the wrong colors, we use the wrong font, we use the wrong um, outline. And so there's a lot that goes into it, but you don't have to be intimidated and you don't have to go at it alone. The Economic Opportunity Board is here to help you be confident, to be successful and to help you land that employment that you're after. So please give us a call, log on to our website. We are here every first and third Wednesday of the month with our Workforce Wednesdays webinar. And we are bringing uh, educators, trainers, and employers to the community so that you know what resources are out there available to you so that you know who to call and where to go 
Um, if you're looking for employment, if you're looking for uniforms, if you're looking for uh, to start a new career, um, the Economic Opportunity Board is here to help in that recovery and to help get the community and Nevada back to work. Thank you so very much, Scott, for your input. We appreciate you. Uh, LaShondra, can you tell us what kind of um, um, students do you see that are looking for this training? Is it a certain age group? So actually we have seen students from, I think the young individuals mm -hmm. to older individuals to uh, individuals, uh, women in particular, we typically don't think about women driving. Mm -hmm. And so that is something that we really try to focus on as well to teach women how mm -hmm. to, um, you know, drive. And because we had one customer, for example, who was in her mid forties, um, had been in the casino industry, you know, for years and then COVID affected her. And so she's like, I have to start something new, you know, and like I mentioned earlier, you, one thing we noticed is the warehousing and, and the stores didn't stop. So she figured, okay, I might as well jump on the bandwagon. And so, you know, we've seen just all walks of life, different people. We have um, one business owner. So this is something that's interesting is, you know, I think about those people that we've built relationships with as far as, you know, getting folks to work. Like we had an individual that we just trained. He's a business owner of a spa company. And of course, he has to have things moved, you know, with these, these spas and these, um, what are they called? The jacuzzis. Mm -hmm. And as we were training him, there was another individual who came, who was sent to us by um, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. So mm -hmm. they were training at this on the same day. Well, the spa guy, he was only getting his certification just to make sure that he was safe and protected. And if he has other individuals, you know, to come that they can come to us and, you know, get trained as well. But he needed to know for himself, okay, how do I move uh, these, these things around? But right. he hired the veteran um, on a 90 day basis. Oh, so wow. just, you, they built a relationship that quick and he hired him. So, you know, we had someone who was already an entrepreneur and business owner Mm -hmm. um, who, you know, didn't, did he have to have the training? No, but he was interested in being trained for himself, you know, right. so that way he could do the job himself. But then he also hired a guy who was a veteran and yeah. who was looking for work, you know? So, so yes, those are the types of, we have everybody that comes and that's interested, you know, that thinks that, that this could help them. So don't limit yourself, whether it's based on gender or age, um, do not limit yourself. If you are out there looking for a new career, forklift, uh, a forklift certification may help you. It may be a benefit to you. Um, I know that a lot of um, individuals who were in uh, culinary and um, the hotel industry and, um, you know, the casino industry here in Las Vegas, a lot of them are just were so devastated, you know, by uh, COVID that they just are not returning. They are not returning to that restaurant industry and some of those other um, industries. And so a lot of individuals are looking for new careers. And so this forklift training, again, it may be for you. Um, don't limit yourself due to age or um, gender or intimidation or just a fear, you know, um, give it a try, give it a try. And there are so many other in-demand sectors that are out there that need individuals to apply, but you have to be certified. Um, you just can't get in a big rig and start driving. It doesn't work that way. So <laughs> Um, you just can't go to Walmart and say, I want to work in the pharmacy. It doesn't work that way. So you have to get certified, but this is not something that takes two and three and five years. So we're not talking about um, associates or bachelor's or master degrees. We're talking about certifications, but certifications that can get you um, to earn in a livable wage and it, certifications that can get you that new position or get you a great start in a new career. Um, and a lot of us may not be able to afford it. And so the Economic Opportunity Board is here to help you with that funding. We have community partners that help us with funding. Um, and so there are a lot of resources and a lot of support out there in the community. Um, so if you're watching this, this uh, live webinar, please share it. Um, send it out to others, post it on your website. If you're an employer, 
Um, if you're looking for employees, you can also please call the Economic Opportunity Board, 702-445-7105. When we say we are here for the community and we are here to aid in recovery, it is we don't limit ourselves. It is not just for those who are seeking employment. It is for employers as well. You know, we all have gone through this tragedy. We all have gone through this pandemic uh, of COVID-19. And so we all have a need, no matter where it may be, we all have a need. So the Economic Opportunity Board has a plethora of services. Please give us a call, log on to our website. Um, again, we are here with Ms. LaShondra Lewis, who is with Nevada uh, Forklift Training. Um, LaShondra, can you tell us a little bit about what someone can expect when they sign up for your training? Absolutely. So um, like you mentioned, Sana, you know, this is, it's a great thing to become certified in this in that it literally would take you maybe a half a day um, to do so. Now we have a certain way that we do it, but, um, and of course that's to, first of all, we get you in a, in a uh, in front of, in, in a classroom. Okay, mm -hmm. in a classroom setting. So we have to go over what OSHA requires first and it's to understand everything about operating that forklift from start to finish. And that mm -hmm. can take about two hours. Um, and then we have a live portion of our training. And I just want to mention, you know, sometimes people will think, oh, well, I can go online and get this cheap certification for forklift training. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can, you know, you can absolutely do that. The difference is with us is that we're going to have you testing and practicing on a live vehicle. So we are going to have you um, driving it around so that you are fully comfortable because most employers are going to require that. So right. you might, you might, you know, you can try to spend your money on the one online, um, but the employer is going to come back to you and say, okay, have you physically driven? You know, we need to see that. Um, I will also say, so that takes about another two hours. And then what we also offer is if it's your first time driving, and you, you know, still are not too comfortable, we for free will have you come back another session or two um, to just practice if you want. You know, we can set it up to, to come back and you can do some more driving, you know, um, to practice. But I will say that all in all, maybe four to five hours, maybe six, you know, or something like that if you're coming back to practice um, to, to, to have that done. So yeah, it's, it's not a all, you know, it doesn't take forever to get your certification. That certification I also want to add lastly, lasts for three years. OSHA requires that every three years you become recertified. Wow, that is amazing. That's mm -hmm. great that you allow, um, you know, individuals to come back because experience is the best teacher. Yes. You know, as you mentioned, you can take an online class, but being behind the wheel can be intimidating, especially if it's your first time driving. Um, you saw where the gears were, you saw where this button or that button was, but you didn't actually have to do it. So right. just think about if you were going to be a pilot and you watched it online, how to become a pilot, how to land the plane, how to drive the plane, how to start it. But it is so different. <laughs> it's yes. So you know, actually being behind that wheel, even in high school, you know, you take the driver, right. the simulation wheel, it is nothing like getting behind that wheel and you got traffic all around you. You got right. red lights and yellow lights and you got people blowing their horn because you're going too slow and you, it's, it's definitely best that you get behind an actual forklift and you do that training. It's worth that one day off of work. Even if you take a half a day, those four to five hours, it is worth it to get this certification. So do not sell yourself short. Do not sell yourself cheap. If you do not have the means to pay for this training, give us a call. We can assist you. If you know someone who may benefit from this training, give them this information, pass it forward. Each one reach one, each one teach one is my motto. So um, we all are here to help one another and to get the community back to work and, and just to help out in recovery because we all are recovering from something. Um, LaShondra, can you tell us what does the ideal applicant look like um, who is going to be taking this training? I think the ideal applicant, as long as there's nobody, you're not crazy. I'm just joking. But as long as you, as long as you can come in there and you are hungry and you're interested, um, I, I will say that, you know, because it does require some time, the only thing that we maybe struggle with just a teeny bit is individuals who will set an appointment 
and then, you know, cancel and they'll do it multiple times. And I understand life happens, you know. Um, so, you know, we do have a very small fee associated with that if it happens more than once. Um, mm-hmm. to, to, but that's something that even we work around. But that's the only thing that we would ask is that you would be dedicated. You know, you come in, you're hungry to learn, you are willing to um, listen to our trainer and what they're telling you. Um, you know, you you attain, you know, a, a, a small um, like little uh, quiz and um, mm-hmm. the checklist information, that kind of stuff. As long as you're willing to be open to those things to take with you and mm-hmm. to remember and just listening, you know, that's really it. You know, you have to be 18 or older. I, I, I want to make sure that I, you know, I'll say that you do have to be 18. But other than that, that there are really no, <laughs> there's really nothing. Um, that, so it's for everybody, really. Right. Except right. for the crazies. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to show up be willing to learn, mm-hmm. um, be a good listener. And that is, those are most qualities that most of us possess. Those are yes. qualities that most of us possess. So um, if you are interested in construction, construction, if you are interested in forklift training, if you want to go work in a warehouse, um, this is a great place for you to start. This is a leg up for you. Um, we know a lot of warehouses start out at maybe eight, nine, ten dollars, sometimes eleven dollars. Yeah. If you walk in that door and you say, hey, I am forklift certified. I have I have an OSHA certificate. Um, I have experience behind that forklift. Um, I'm eager, you know, I'm ready to learn. Um, hire me because I am a great employee. I am punctual and I am ready to do this job. Um, it helps. Versus you just coming in and say, hey, you know, I worked at a um, warehouse before, TJ Maxx warehouse, and for a year, and I have experience. You know, there are so many things that you can do within a warehouse other than just uh, receiving and unloading. You know, you can be a forklift driver. You can operate other equipment. Um, There's so many things that you can do besides just being a packer or some of those starting out positions. So this is a great place for you to get a good start. Um, even if you don't stay there, you know, it's, it's a good start and it will help you to learn a livable wage. Um, LaShondra, is there anything that you want our listening viewers to know? Um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I don't know if there was, uh, you wanted me to put information about contact for us yes. um, in our email address in the chat. I can add that there, but our telephone, Phone number is 702-444-1952. Our uh, website address is uh, nevadaforkliftraining.com. Mm-hmm. And um, our email address is nvforklift at gmail.com. So if anyone is interested, you know, and they want to get in touch with us, definitely do so. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you would, please put that information in the chat. Sure. We'll be done. We'll be posting this to YouTube. It'll be on Facebook. It'll be on the EOB website. And if you would like to add it to your website as well, I can send you the link for that. Um, just put this, this information out to as many um, people as possible. Yes, great. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. Scott, is there anything that you want our listening viewers to know before we sign off? No, just let me know if you need to have help. Uh, Call us or uh, send us an email. And our email is workforce at eobcapsnb.org. Uh, send me your resume or uh, call up. We can give you the information if you if you forget it or uh, if you're like me and you you wrote it down somewhere and, and it's gone. Uh, but uh, Again, my objective is to help you. I've I've been through this enough times. I can kind of walk people through it. We can do some practice questions, uh, practice interviews, uh, work on your resume, uh, give you some thoughts and ideas of places to go where you can get started. Uh, so we just uh, objective in, in all of this is to kind of give you a little bit of a help where right now, you're just not sure where to go or what to do. Right, right. Thank you so much, Scott. And thank you, LaShondra, for your time. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Um, 
And for all our listening viewers, if you are just looking for some employment referrals, if you don't know where to go, if you don't know where to look, if you don't know where to start, if you have applied to 20, 30 um, positions and haven't gotten any luck, haven't received any offers, give us a call. The Economic Opportunity Board is here to help you um, with all those things that are workforce related. We have other programs as well. Our Family Supportive Services Program. We have a senior program um, at the Martin Luther King Senior Center as well. You see the photo behind me. That's our newly renovated and updated building on Martin Luther King and Cary. So we have several services and several programs that we offer. Um, give us a call, 702-445-7105. Uh, log on to our website. There's tons and tons of information about who we are, what we do in the community, what services we provide, what programs we offer. That website is going to be eobcapsnv.org. And as Scott mentioned, our workforce uh, email is workforce at eobcapsnv.org. Thank you all for tuning in and we will see you um, in two weeks for our next Workforce Wednesdays webinar right here at 11 a.m. where we are bringing live to you employers, trainers, and educators so that we can aid in recovery and get Nevada back to work. Thank you so much. You all have a great day. Bye. Bye.